Hi everyone, my name is Alex, and I recently found an unusual toilet paper. The thing is, it turned out to be complicated. Pretty complicated. Do you want to know where I found it and what I decided to do? Then watch the end of my story. One day, my friends and I decided to go camping to get away a little. Things didn't initially go according to plan that day. The weather was unstable, and a tire blew out near the house. While Chris changed the tire, I ate a pizza I found in his fridge at home. It was incredibly good. And an hour later, we drove out of the house. In the middle of the road, I felt terrible pain and gas in my stomach. Shit man, couldn't you have gone to the bathroom beforehand? I could have, but how was I supposed to know that there was cheese in the pizza? It says it on the box. It's all cheese. That's what it's called. Cheese. Shit. If you don't find a bathroom now, I'll have to do it in the car. I swear. Don't you dare. Not in my car, okay? Slow down. Then we saw a gas station and the car stopped and I ran out and I saw this really cool car. This awesome Maybach. I also thought to myself, like whose car is this? At the same time, I was thinking and ran to the bathroom. Once in the stall, I made a whole volcano eruption. Sorry for the details, but those who have lactose intolerance will understand. Anyway, when I was done, I realized that I didn't have enough paper. While I wiped myself as best I could, and then with my pants down, I started looking in a nearby stall for more paper, and I found a whole roll. I tore off one piece and realized that it looked a lot like a hundred dollar bill. Awesome. I said to myself, how realistic. I just wanted to crumple it up, but still checked. What if the bill is real? And yes, it really did look real. Anyway, I ran into the third stall, finished my business, and checked the dollars against the light. Oh no, it can't be. Someone left a whole roll of bucks in here. I squealed. That's impossible. I had no idea how much dough was rolled up, but I hid the roll in my bag. When I came out of the bathroom, I pretended that nothing had happened. I decided not to tell my friends about the dough because I knew we'd spend it all at once, and I didn't want to do that. What took you so long? We've been waiting for this. Did you go to all the booths in there? Yeah, kind of. All right, let's go. Finally, we started camping. We went to a forest. We pitched a tent and we made a fire. Do you have any paper? Like what? Any kind, we need a fire. Ah, no, no, I don't have anything. You're always carrying around notebooks. Give me some. I told you I don't have anything. Okay, look, if you're too lazy to go and get your bag, just say so. I'll get it myself. No, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. I was afraid Chris would see the money and ask questions. Besides, the other guys wouldn't mind splitting it all up either. I found an unwanted notebook and gave it to the fireplace. And all the time we spent with the guys in the woods, I just kept glancing at the bag, carrying it around with me forever, sleeping in my arms at night. I know it was stupid, but at that time, I just wanted to save the money and get back to town as soon as possible to spend it on myself. And I managed to do as planned. Until the penultimate day, I screwed up. My friends and I were supposed to climb a mountain, and it was small, but we wanted to kind of sit there and think. While I was climbing up there, my backpack was almost overbalanced and I almost fell. Chris freaked out. Stop carrying that bag! I like it, I'll lug it around. What's in there? Nothing, it's my personal stuff. So why are you getting so worked up? Show me what's inside. You almost died because of that right now. It's okay, I said back off, let's move on. But Chris didn't want to calm down. He got really pissed off, forcibly pulling me down to the ground and started trying to open the bag. I was ducking and getting pissed off, getting angry, yelling at him. But Chris swooped right down on my back from behind, then yanked my pocket and tore it open. He saw the roll of money. What is that? Uh, I said, what is it, Alex? Why aren't you saying anything? It's money. I see it's not candy. Where did it come from? I found it. You're full of shit. Tell the truth. I found it in the toilet at the gas station. I'm telling the truth. I was going to sneak it in. Oh, shit. Jacob must have lost them. Jacob who? Didn't you see that fancy Maybach next to us? Its owner's name is Jacob. He is the son of a local mafia boss nicknamed the Baker. Why the Baker? Because he turns his enemies into pies if his family gets hurt. Oh, shit. Chris demanded the money, packed up all the stuff, and told the guys, Let's go to the gas station. What? What if they don't know and they don't find me? What if they forget or something? Are you an idiot? The son of a mafioso dropped so much dough and you expect him to forget? 
You better pray we do. It's been too many days. I bet your picture's all over town. He's looking for you. I know he is. Oh, shit. Now what? We'll see about that. We've got to get the money back quickly. Where you got it from? You put it back where you found it, in the same position, okay? All right, all right, I'll do it. That's when I got really scared. We quickly folded our tents, packed up, and drove into town. The mood was very different now to the mood we were in when we went camping. I felt guilty for messing up, but who amongst you wouldn't do the same, especially not knowing who they belong to and not wanting to just take the whole role? Tell me honestly, write in the comments under the video, or at least put a plus sign. There is money lying in front of you, under your nose, a lot of it. So much that you don't even dare to count how much. Would you take it? But the reality is this. My friend tried to convince me otherwise to save me, and I sat there and freaked out. Anyway, we got to that gas station, and I took my bag and went to put the money back in its place. Told Chris to wait in the car. Nobody was there but us. I went to the bathroom and took a piss. I just turned around to wash my hands when I saw three guys behind me in the mirror reflection. Oh shit, you scared me. And when you took the money, were you not scared? What money? Are you kidding me? Don't tell me you came here to try your luck again. No, I just went to the bathroom. All right, let's do this the hard way. He grabbed me by the neck and made a fist. And then I gave up. I got it, I got it, I got it. I'll give it all back. I didn't take anything. Honestly, I swear. Here they are. I opened the bag and showed him the roll. The guy took it and let me go. He started counting it out. It turned out to be around $30,000. You're lucky I'm in a good mood today. And how did you know it was me? Do you know who I am? I've heard of it. I'll get anybody, especially when they steal money from me. Plus, there's always a lot of cameras at gas stations. If anything, <laughs> I didn't think about it. Also, I have one question. Why wrap them up in a roll? It's a friend's birthday. We wanted to give him an original gift. We stopped at a gas station on the way, and I trusted my friend with the money, but he accidentally lost it. The birthday was ruined because of us, and my friend is a girl, and she really doesn't like to be screwed over. Do you understand everything now? Yes, very much. Well, I'll go. Go fast. Make sure we don't see each other again. Uh, okay. I got out of there on shaky legs. I was scared. Chris jumped out of the car, ran over, and started asking me what was wrong. I stuttered. My heart was pounding like crazy. Come on, let's go. I'll tell you in the car. We got out of there at high speed, and I told them everything I'd been through. The guys got mad, but then again, it was my own fault. Only later I realized how lucky I was. Yes, I found the money, but since we were camping, I couldn't spend it, because there was no place to do it. They also didn't beat me, though they scared me a lot. But that's better than lying in a gas station bathroom bleeding. Chris called me an asshole about 56 times as we drove. Moron for taking it and moron for not telling me right away and then trying to spend it in town. We got back into town and Chris gave me a ride home. I wasn't in a good mood. I hope you'll be smarter next time. That's for sure. Thank you. If it hadn't been for you, I don't think it would have come to this without severe consequences. Remember one thing. Free cheese in a mousetrap. That's right. So this time, I learned two things. Number one, never pick up large amounts of money, especially in toilets. And number two, also never mess with mob kids. Hey, my name is Monica. I know firsthand what poverty is. We were so poor that we could not afford anything extra. A birthday celebration, for example, with a cake and gifts. But one day, everything changed. Or rather, we changed everything. There are four of us in the family. Dad, mom, brother, and me. My parents worked as teachers, my father at the university, my mother at school. We lived modestly, but as our father said, honestly. He and my mother were very decent people and demanded the same from my brother and me. Dad is convinced that money earned by honest work is much more important than the other way around. We didn't complain, even though we were poor. Sometimes I envied some guys, which have big and beautiful house, dogs, pool in the yard, as have some my classmates. Each of them had their own room. The girls went shopping. They often called me, but I refused, saying that I was not feeling well. I think they understood the real reason, though they didn't show it. I was very happy that they were all very good guys and did not look at the financial situation. My little brother always asked me what my dream was and I said I wanted to grow up and get a good job so I could earn a decent living. And I also wanted to send him to a talent show. 
By the way, did I tell you that my little brother Michael can sing really well? We asked him almost every night to sing us something after dinner. Michael especially loved the classics and always wanted to participate in a talent show. Once he even took a camera from his friend, recorded the video there, and sent it to that program. He passed the selection. He was invited to come to participate, but we were poor, so there was no money for the trip. I was proud of him and wanted to help with all my heart, so I started knitting children's clothes and selling them online, but I didn't have enough money to go half the way. One evening, we all got together again after dinner. Dinner was beans and broccoli again. I hated them. They were rather boring, but they were cheap products and, as my mother liked to say, useful. I watched as we ate small portions, that is, with maximum economy. The table seemed almost empty. Traditionally, after everyone had eaten, Mikey sang us another song. You should have heard him sing sensuously. He closes his eyes and feels the song. Michael always sings with soul, and it was magic. He loved to sing more than anything in the world. My mother said dreamily that if he had been on a talent show, he would have won. After loud applause, the parents discussed the news of the day, told each other funny stories with students, and then Dad said that today one of them did not prepare for an important exam in his subject and could not pass the test. His father sent him for a retake and told him to come back in a week, and the student said that this test was the last, and in a week he had to fly to Europe for a vacation. He said that if he did not pass the exam well, his parents would not let him go on vacation, And this was the dream of his life. I told him to prepare better, and he said, You see, he doesn't have time for this. And then he takes out his wallet and asks, How much? I didn't understand what it was about. And then I saw that he was offering me a bribe. Can you imagine? My father said. Then, according to him, he escorted this insolent student out of the door and told him not to approach him with such a proposal again. Then he began to lament that now students have become quite lazy, that it is easier for them to buy everything with someone else's money. I will say right away, I shared my father's opinion about honest earnings, fully supported their point of view, but today when I looked at our modest dinner in a different way, at my brother who again pleased us with his favorite song, something turned me over. It's like I don't want to put up with what we have anymore. I could feel my anger rising. Maybe at least once in your life you should take a bribe so that at least your son will fulfill his dream and get on with this show, I blurted out to my father. My parents were taken aback by my audacity to say such a thing and by the fact that such a thing had occurred to me. The indignant father got up from the table and said that he was ashamed of such a daughter. I, of course, burst into tears at these words and went out into the street with a madman, slammed the door, and roared on. At this moment... My classmate Nick was passing by, and he asked what was wrong. I didn't want to tell. I was embarrassed to share my problems with someone. Even though we'd been friends since elementary school, I'd never shared anything like this with him. But he sat next to me for a long time until I calmed down, and then finally got me to talk to him. Nick called me stupid for not asking for help and offered to make money by hosting a concert with my brother. Let him use his talent and earn his way to another city and participate in the show, suggested Nick. The idea was quite simple, but we needed the help of other guys to do it. Nick, as promised, took care of everything and classmates also helped. A few days later, a music concert was held at the huge mansion of Nick's cousin, Sarah, to raise funds for Mikey. My generous classmates helped organize a mini stage, make cool lighting, a buffet for guests, and seating. It was like a dream. I couldn't believe it was really happening. Michael, when he heard this news, was very happy. He prepared a whole repertoire for the evening, took his favorite guitar, and went out to sing. I watched the reaction of people. It seems that he managed to involve the guests in his special mood. At the end, everyone gave a standing ovation. Our parents also came there, of course. My father wanted to apologize for the fact that his life principles made the family starve. I will not take dishonest money, but I can give private lessons, thereby earning more, he said and hugged me. My father finally realized that the principles of life are important, but we must not allow people to live only by them, to please themselves and to the detriment of others. That was enough. I was happy. Well, it's been about a month since then. My father and I hurriedly cooked steaks for dinner while I washed fruit and made salad. 
On this day, we had a special occasion. We were waiting for Mom and Mikey. They were about to arrive from New York. Oh yes, you don't know. Mikey won the talent show. 